Hello children, welcome to the presentation of practical session. In this presentation, we are going to focus on the practicals, physical and chemical changes. These practicals are based on the topic of chapter 2. Is matter around us pure? A. To carry out the following reactions and classify them as physical and chemical changes. For that, we are going to see five practicals in this. First one, iron nail and copper sulphate solution in water. Second, burning of magnesium ribbon in air. Third, zinc with dilute sulfuric acid. Sodium sulphate and barium chloride in the form of the solutions in water is fourth and fifth heating of copper sulphate crystals. Theory Physical changes. It is a change in which no new substance is formed. Physical change is a reversible change. Chemical changes. It is a change in which a new substance or substances is formed and the change is irreversible. Chemical changes are accompanied by any of the following that is evolution of heat, light or sound, change in color and formation of a precipitate. Materials required, test tube stand with clean test tubes, a pair of tongs, test tube holder, Bunsen burner, iron nail, aqueous copper sulphate solution, small pieces of granulated zinc, dilute sulfuric acid, sodium sulphate solution, barium chloride solution, a few crystals of copper sulphate and a dropper. So children today we are going to see for the physical and chemical changes. So we will be performing few practicals and from that we will try to understand which is a chemical change and which is a physical change. So let's start. I have for you over here copper sulphate crystals that is the salt of copper sulphate. Let's see the color of it. It's blue in color. Children it has got five water molecules that is termed as the water of crystallization that is the fixed number of water molecules which are present in a unit salt. So that's termed as five water molecules present in copper sulphate which we call it as water of crystallization. Okay, this blue color is due to the water of crystallization. Right, now we will take make a solution of this copper sulphate in a beaker. So I've taken a beaker, let's pour water to it. Yes, and now I'm adding copper sulphate salt to it. Right, and we just mix it. You can stir the solution or dissolve the copper sulphate. You can do it with the help of the glass rod also. So here I have glass rod. We'll mix it. You see the beautiful blue color solution children? That's nothing but the copper sulphate solution. So the copper sulphate has got completely dissolved in it and here is a copper sulphate solution. Now we will add iron fillings to it. So you can add iron nail also to it. I have an iron nail also but for quick reaction so that you get quick reaction I will add iron fillings. Iron fillings are nothing but the crushed iron metal. So I will just add the iron fillings to it. Children as these reactions are little slow reactions it takes little time. So we will stir and we will observe where the iron metal will react with the copper sulphate solution. Let's see. Okay, slowly the color is turning children, changing from blue to green. The blue color is faded and you can observe a green color. That means a color change states that a chemical change is taking place. Isn't it? Beautiful green color has come. Now what has happened in this reaction? When iron metal is added to copper sulphate solution, this iron uh, is highly reactive metal than copper. So it is able to displace the copper from its salt solution, forming iron sulphate that is ferrous sulphate and the copper is set free. Now how can you understand which is copper and how? Let us see. Here at the bottom can you see the red deposit? Can you see children here the red deposit? This red deposit is of copper. 
as copper is reddish brown in color you will observe the reddish brown copper which is settled at the bottom and the green color ferrous sulfate solution is formed so copper sulfate reacts with iron giving you ferrous sulfate plus copper is set free now this is a chemical reaction as we have identified by seeing the color change this ferrous ferrous sulfate which is formed is having a new set of properties it doesn't have the properties shown by the reactants so the product which is formed is with, is with a new set of properties so we can call this reaction as the chemical reaction so a chemical change has taken place over here as a chemical reaction is taking place observations copper sulfate solution is blue in color the color of copper sulfate solution changes from blue to light green on dropping the iron nail in the solution the iron nail gets coated with reddish brown deposit of copper metal inference color change and deposit of a residue are indications of a chemical change new substances are also formed iron plus copper sulfate gives iron sulfate plus copper is set free iron is more reactive than copper and displaces copper from its salt solution copper sulfate so next reaction we have for the magnesium rivet see children here this is a metal magnesium is a metal and uh, we have this in the form of a magnesium as we know that metals are malleable so we can beat them into thin sheets and you can see the magnesium ribbon right now i will take a piece of magnesium ribbon easily i can break it now how could i break a metal so easily because it's quite thin and magnesium it undergoes corrosion very fast so it has formed a dull appearance on it can you see a very dull appearance on it because metals are lustrous so it should have a proper shine but you are not able to see a proper shine it's looking dull why because it gets easily corroded when it comes in contact with the air so a magnesium oxide layer has formed on it so what we will do is take a sandpaper and scrub it and then we will burn it and see and after burning let us see that whether a chemical reaction has taken place or a physical reaction has taken place okay so i'll scrub it with the sandpaper So children see here I am scrubbing it with the sandpaper and slowly the top layer of magnesium oxide has been removed and magnesium metal is being exposed can you see children there is a shine on it now it is shining i just do it with more why we need to do this to remove the oxide layer which is formed on it due to corrosion what will happen if you don't remove yes it will take longer time to be heated so we will remove it so that the metal is been exposed magnesium metal is to be exposed so we are interested in burning the magnesium ribbon we are interested in heating the magnesium ribbon chain. okay that is why i have scrubbed it with the help of sandpaper you can observe children see here this has got a shine now whereas this has got a dull appearance isn't it now the next step is we will burn this magnesium ribbon now children it's very important to take precaution over here while burning the magnesium ribbon because it burns with high intensity of heat and light that is it burns with a white dazzling flame when we will do it you will be able to observe it so you need to protect your eyes keep away from your body when you performing this activity and never do it in without the absence of the in the absence of the teacher okay so here i'm going to heat the magnesium ribbon it takes some time let's see yes this is the white dazzling flame of magnesium ribbon when it is burnt very good and now you can see children a white ash of magnesium oxide is formed which i will collect it in the china dish let's close the plan see you this is the magnesium oxide ash white ash of magnesium oxide form now can you relate the properties of this magnesium ribbon and this magnesium oxide no that means a chemical reaction has taken place where the new compound of magnesium oxide is formed with a new set of properties so this reaction is also a 
chemical reaction. Observations The magnesium ribbon on heating for a minute or so catches fire. It burns with a dazzling white flame to form a white powdery mass. Inference A new substance is formed with the evolution of heat and light. Hence, this is a chemical change. Magnesium reacts with oxygen to form magnesium oxide with the release of heat and light. This is a combination reaction where magnesium oxidizes to form magnesium oxide. Let us see for the next reaction. I have zinc metal okay, and HCl acid. I will take a stand. And I have a beaker in which I have water. Right? So, this is a beaker in which I have taken water. In this, I have taken this acid, HCl acid. Okay? Hydrochloric acid. Today. This is a concentrated hydrochloric acid. And I want to use dilute acid. So, what I do is, this is the water which is there. I will go on adding acid to water. Now, this is called as the dilution of an acid. Now, why we should add acid to water and not water to acid? Now, children, dilution of an acid is a highly exothermic reaction. And we need to add drop by drop acid to water. So that the heat which is produced is absorbed by the water. And if you do it in the other way, that is, add acid to water. Uh, uh, sorry, that is, add water to acid. Then there will be localized heating. That is, the heat which is produced will not be able to be absorbed in the solution. And it will splash out will get lesions, accidental lesions and that is why you should be very uh, precautious when you are diluting an acid. So when you dilute an acid, take concentrated acid and add drop by drop in the water. Just like this I will do it for you. Just a drop of acid and shake it. Put a drop of acid and shake it. Again put a drop and shake it. See children, in this manner I have diluted the acid with the help of adding drop by drop acid to the water. So now I have diluted hydrochloric acid with me which I am in need of, right? Now I have zinc metal as I told you. I am going to add the zinc metal in hydrochloric acid. That is I will see a reaction of metals with acids. Let me show you how zinc looks. This is how. You see children. Beautiful grey, grey silver shine on this metal, zinc metal. Right. So, this is the zinc metal, show you high luster. I take a small piece of it. This piece I have taken of zinc metal and I will just simply put it in the beaker. And we will see for the reaction. Okay. Beautiful. See, children. You can observe minute bubbles on the zinc metal. You can see the bubbles rising up also. That means the zinc metal is reacting with the acid. The bubble formation is telling you that there is a gas formation. This beautiful reaction is taking place to it. See here. The complete surface of the zinc metal is filled with minute bubbles. That is, the hydrochloric acid is reacting with the zinc metal. And there is evolution of gas. Now children, when you collect this gas in a test tube and bring a burning sphincter near it, it burns with a pop sound. When it burns with a pop sound, we come to know that it is a hydrogen gas which is evolved. Right? So that is a characteristic test for seeing evolution of the hydrogen gas. So the bubbles of this are of hydrogen gas. So we have a reaction over here as zinc reacts with hydrochloric acid giving you zinc chloride and hydrogen gases evolved. Now again here there is evolution of gas which is a characteristic feature showing you that the chemical change is taking place. Right? So we can say that when a zinc metal reacts with hydrochloric acid or metals when they react with acids a chemical reaction is taking place. So beautiful reaction of zinc and hydrochloric acid children we have seen. So this was also an example of a chemical change. Observation 
Effervescence is seen with the evolution of a colorless gas. The colorless gas evolved is hydrogen, which explodes with a pop sound when brought near a flame. Heat is liberated. Inference This reaction is a chemical change because a new substance is formed with the evolution of a gas. Zinc plus sulfuric acid gives zinc sulfate and hydrogen gases evolved along with the heat. Zinc displaces hydrogen from dilute sulfuric acid. Zinc is more reactive than hydrogen in the reactivity series. Let's see for sodium sulfate. I have sodium sulfate children here and barium chloride for you. So let's see one reaction with it. I'll take two test tubes and we'll make solution of these salts. Right? This is barium chloride, a crystalline white salt. I'll make a solution of it. For making a solution, I have taken a small amount of salt and I'll add water to it. And I'll make the solution of it. So I have the solution of barium chloride. Next I have sodium sulfate. So I'll take the salt of sodium sulfate which is an amorphous white salt. Barium chloride was crystalline whereas sodium sulfate is amorphous. So this is also white in color. So I take this salt and we make solution of it. That is I will add water to it. Just shake it and sodium sulfate quickly dissolves in the water. Children, now we have two solutions. Barium chloride solution and sodium sulfate solution. What I do is, I simply add it. What do I observe? A white precipitate is formed of barium sulfate and sodium chloride. So, a chemical reaction has taken place here. Formation of a precipitate has taken place. Precipitate is the insoluble substance formed in the products. That's termed as the precipitate. So, a chemical reaction is taking place. So, whenever there is a formation of an insoluble substance, then we term it as a chemical change taking place. Observations A white precipitate is formed which settles at the bottom of the test tube. Barium sulfate, which is insoluble, is formed along with the sodium chloride. Inference This is a chemical change because two new substances are formed, barium sulfate and sodium chloride. And barium sulfate is in the form of a white precipitate. Sodium sulfate reacting with barium chloride gives barium sulfate plus sodium chloride. When sodium sulfate reacts with barium chloride, it yields an insoluble white precipitate of barium sulfate. Precautions Test tube should be clean and dry. Always hold the test tube with a test tube holder. So now let us move to the next reaction children. And let us see whether it is a physical change or a chemical change. So here I have few crystals of copper sulfate. You can observe them. And you know that the color is blue. Blue color copper sulfate crystals. I will just take one or two crystals from it. And we will add this into the test tube. So here, and I will put the test tube holder as we are going to heat this copper sulfate crystals. Right. So you have observed that these crystals are blue in color as we have earlier discussed that they are, they are having five water molecules. That is the water of crystallization. With the help of this spirit lamp, I will heat these crystals and observe.
the sum can be our children. And if you can observe, it has started turning into white color. you can see now the outer part has got completely converted into white right now what is this white earlier when this copper sulfate was having water molecules it is termed as the hydrated salt and when you heat it it loses its water molecules and form anhydrous copper sulfate that is only CuSO4 now we don't add the water molecules in it right now I will stop heating and I will allow this test tube to cool down and after cooling we will add water to it and see Let's see then whether there will be a color change. So I am keeping it here for the test tube to become cool. So children, the reactions which we did that is iron plus copper sulfate or zinc plus hydrochloric zinc reacting with the hydrochloric acid or for the burning of magnesium ribbon, isn't it? As well as this precipitate which is formed. All these four reactions, they show chemical reaction. Right? What about this one? We will see. So slowly it's getting cooled down. Let's add now. Slightly it is warm now. Now it's got cool. Let's add water to it and see whether the blue color has again regained. Can you observe children? Again the white crystals have got the blue color. So can you tell that the water crystals with water molecules which were present in the copper sulfate were imparting the blue color to the solution or to the crystals? Yes. The water molecules, that is the water of crystallization which was present in the copper sulfate was imparting the blue color. And that is why when we heated it, when there was loss of water molecules, the color disappeared. That is, it turned to white. And when we again added water to it, it has again become blue in color. Now, this change is not... 
not a chemical change. It is a physical change because it had only lost the water molecules. Its properties did not change as it retained the blue color again back. So this example was of the physical change. So children, today we have seen many reactions in which you could clearly identify the physical changes and the chemical changes taking place. Observation Blue color of copper sulfate changes to white and water droplets are seen on the inner walls of the test tube. The white crystals turn blue again with the addition of water. Inference This is a physical change as no new substance is formed and the crystals regain their original color on addition of water. The change is reversible. Copper sulfate dot that is CuSO4 dot 5H2O gives CuSO4 plus 5H2O. On heating, hydrated copper sulfate loses its water molecules to become anhydrous copper sulfate, which is white in color. CuSO4 plus 5H2O gives CuSO4 dot 5H2O. Copper sulfate crystals regain their color on addition of water to anhydrous copper sulfate. So children, I hope you must have understood how to identify a physical change and a chemical change with the help of the following reactions which we had performed. Thank you children.